Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. and Welcome to another episode about Affinity Designer. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look on how to create a custom vector brush. Just remember before starting a vector brush and a pixel brush are completely different and you shouldn't try to create one to use it in another panel is not how it works so let's not get confused and let's keep everything separated for now we're going to focus only on creating a vector type of brush so using in the vector persona first if we access the brush panel on the right side, you will notice we have different categories for the different type of brushes. And by default, Affinity Designer comes from a, a pretty good amount of brush with a custom settings, a bunch of custom settings. Uh, nothing really special, but they're pretty useful. So if we select the brush tool here, and for example, we select a color that it's easy to see something like red and bright maybe a little bit less and we pick one of these brushes for example we pick this super this painting type of brushes here and we paint it. you will notice that uh, we have this sort of image that it's following our brush and we have a tail we have a head and what's in between it's kind of stretched and it follows just to simulate the same image that we have here. And of course, if we do it smaller, it adapts. You can see how the image gets stretched and repeated throughout the length of our brush. These vector brushes are not like the pixel version. So if we pass on top, we don't have any blend mode or something like that. We can, of course, simulate a blend mode with um, the blend mode of the layer itself, but it's not that we can do painting art with a vector brush. But the important thing is that because everything is vector, these are actual lines. So we can convert these, we can change the uh, brush size even after we created the line and we can change a bunch of things so we can uh, uh, completely remove the type of brush if we want to just a simple line we convert it to a simple line if we want a dashed line we can convert it or if we don't like the brush we can simply replace the type of brush that we're using by selecting another one with the Bezier curve selected. So they're really powerful and really useful while we're doing vector art. Every brush has its own custom settings and you can access the custom settings or the specs of a specific brush by selecting the brush and clicking on this little icon on top right to edit the brush or if you want you can right click on the brush stroke itself and click select edit brush. This editing brush panel, it's really useful and really powerful. So what you can do, you can change the specs or you can change all the aspects, how this brush interacts with itself. First, you can change the default brush size. And as you can see, when I'm changing, while I'm changing these things, also the curve where I use that specific brush is changing because it's selected. If I don't have the curve selected and I change the options of the brush, nothing changes. So remember, if you wanna see uh, how it looks like something like a brush that you're editing, always select the curve itself. So you can control the brush size, you can control the size variation and the opacity variation. As you notice here, I'm changing this stuff, but nothing is changing here because this thing is connected to the pressure, but I just uh, drew the line without any pressure control. We can edit the pressure by accessing the little panel here in the stroke option, pressure. And if we change the pressure, for example, like this, we are increasing or decreasing the pressure in at, in the middle of the stroke. You will notice that because we adapted opacity and size variation, we have a way more opaque type of stroke in the middle and a way smaller type of stroke. And also this thing, we can control it. We can manage globally for the entire brush or locally from the pressure 
uh, curve control and this is really useful. If you think you messed up and you want to reset the custom brush how it was before you can just simply click reset and everything will go uh, back to the original settings. So first of all let's define a brush because in order to create a brush we need an image to start from so let's create a new document and let's leave it for example 1024 per 600 the bigger is the brush the heavier is to be managed by the software but the higher quality you're gonna have so you have to find your own balance and you have to check uh, what type of size you care the most so first in the draw persona let's create a solid that is going to be our background right at the bottom and our rectangle has to be completely black and then our stroke our brush has to be completely white so let's create a brush stroke with a color of white. Perfect. This is really important because the type of brush, the vector brush, how it works, it works with intensity. If we don't have a black background and the actual brush that we want to use white the system cannot apply a custom color on your brush so if we use an image that is the opposite like black the stroke is black and the background is white the system cannot apply a custom color on top so always remember this when you want to create a brush the brush stroke has to be white and the background has to be completely black. The background is not gonna get printed, but the system will recognize that we wanna just use the white part of our brush. So now I'm creating a sort of like fake stroke, something that probably could be useful to, I don't know, do some sketch art or something <laughs> to create some sort of smoky effect with uh, the uh, a vector brush if we want to use that so we have a sort of a head here that has more stuff and then we have a tail here that goes more in opacity and then we have the body that it's kind of consistent but it goes on the opposite direction and that's it let's say that this is the stroke that I want to use. Now what I want to do, I want to readapt this um, document to the size of the stroke. In order to do that, I like a really simple method. I like to select the stroke so I have the actual size. Then I go in the draw persona, I hold the move tool and I select the arbor tool. Then instead of clicking directly insert artboard, I change the size to selection. Automatically, if I click insert artboard based on selection, the artboard is going to be insert. So the document is going to be cut related to the size, relative to the size of my stroke. So now I have my artboard with the back, black background and the vector stroke. Perfect. Now what we have to do, we have to export this vector arbor by clicking file, export, and then we have to export a PNG with a PNG 24 preset and a resample bilinear. Uh, don't change any settings, do not export any other type of file, node vector, we need a PNG, we need just a simple image with a black background. So export it. Let's save it in our download folder and let's call it Smoky Brush. The name is really important because the name of the brush or the image that you're going to use is going to be used to name the brush itself. We can always change the name, but uh, if we start with already the proper name of the stroke to be used in the brush, we are already at a good point. Let's access back our test file let's select the brushes and before creating something i always like to create a custom category so here if you notice in a drop down area you have assorted textured image basic 
and then I created a bunch of other custom categories. That's what I suggest you to do. You can access the creation of custom categories by clicking on the little icon to the right with the drop down chevron and create a new category. You can name your category however you want. And I suggest you to do that so you can collect all your custom brushes in the same section and not get like lost inside other categories. Let's click on the same icon that we used to create a new category and let's select the new texture intensity brush. Three type of brushes we can create. A new solid brush that it's a, just a simple brush and if we go here in assorted these first brushes are solid brushes so like fully vector not based on images or anything it's just like a vector stroke so pretty standard. The second type of brush is the texture intensity brush, that's what we need. The third one is the textured image brush, but the image brush is something that we cannot change the color. The thing that we're interested in is the new texture intensity brush, because so let's click new texture intensity brush, and we're gonna get prompt from the software to select an image that we wanna use. And in my case, I wanna use the smoky brush. PNG that I just created. Let's create, let's click open and automatically we already have this brush. If we selected the brush and we just like draw, you're gonna see that it's okay. It's kind of okay. It gets stretched completely from head to tail. And if I use it like a specific length, for example, let me create some difference. So if I use it from the original length, that it's some sort of like this, but if I go longer or if I go shorter, the brush gets printed in a totally different way. So we have this one that it's kind of the original size. This one is super stretched. You can see the head and the tail super stretched. And this one is super short. So you can see the head and the tail, they are super squished. I don't want this. I want my brush to be consistent and to have head and tail always the same and maybe just the body to be stretched. So in order to do that, we can simply edit the aspects of our brush. So first of all, let's create a stroke that we will use to check how the brush interacts. So let's draw the stroke, something like that. And then let's use the vector tool here, the pen tool to select this and create some hard edges. So we can check also how our brush interacts on hard edges. And that's perfect. Now we have this. Now we can select the brush that we just created and let's right click and click select edit brush. In this panel, we have a lot of options. As I said before, we can control the brush width, the default one. We can control the size variance and the opacity variance based on a specific type of uh, gesture recorded by the software. So we can specify none if we don't want anything to affect size of opacity or leave size and opacities to zero. So nothing, even if we have the pressure activated, nothing is going to affect the uh, look of our brush. But I want to also, for example, for this brush, I want to just the opacity to be varied because this is a smoky brush. So having different opacity is kind of cool. We can control it with pressure, velocity, or inverse velocity. Let's leave it at pressure. This is the Bezier curve that controls the type of pressure. And this is the default one. I suggest you to leave it like that because controlling or managing the Bezier curve for your uh, pressure sensitivity or your tablet can be really tricky. So just leave it like that and it's gonna work. Here we have a couple of cool options. First, we have the option to create a stretched body or a repeated body. What we have now is a stretched body. So as you can see, the length of our brush is stretched to the length of our stroke. If we change it to repeat, the system will maintain the original length of our stroke and it's gonna repeat the same stroke as many times as is necessary to cover the length of the stroke. If we want the head and tail to not be repeated but the body to be stretched, we can do it by changing the head offset and the tail offset. So let's do it. First, let's say that I want the head to start from here. So you already see that we have the head at the beginning, but then when another stroke starts, the head is not repeated. And then I want the tail as well to end up here. So head, 
and tail are gonna be the same even if the stroke is super long or super short head and tail are gonna be the same what changes or what gets changed is the body and the body right now gets repeated you can see these like hard hedges but if we change to stretch you will notice that the body gets stretched for the length of the entire stroke or we can potentially just simply use a repeated and have the same type of tail for example if we want to just repeat this section look how we can change this stroke in a super weird way but let's leave it like that for now there you go of course because of the way we built this stroke this stretching thing looks really weird in this situation so maybe we should rethink the texture but this is just an example the other options that we have here is how to deal with corners so now we have a corner set to pull so when we have a hard edge like in this situation here the hard edge gets pulled so we have this stretching uh, motion that pulls from a corner to another it continues the stretch of our vector brush if we click on overlap the system will interrupt the stroke and we'll start again so we're gonna have a tail and a head on top we have a tail head on top and so on if we click fold the system will create this pretty awful fold so the stroke continues here but we have this hard cut on the edge at a 45 degrees angle and I don't know why you should use fold I probably sometimes it could be necessary but if you notice this happens only when you have a hard edge it doesn't happen when you have a bezier or like smooth curve so by default the pull is the most commonly used one so that's it we don't need to save anything automatically every time you change an option it's automatically saved in our option here so we can close it and if we edit the pressure now because we specify opacity for example down there you go now we have a different type of pressure and now we created our custom stroke of course because the texture that we create is not really accurate and the image we're using is not really good for stretching the results is weird but I created previously these other brush we analyze the brush the structure of the brush we have this center point that it's made I built it on purpose to be stretched and this is the head this is the tail so let's take a look on how it works this specific type of brush by using maybe another color Let's use this one let's create it and let's release that's it as you can see here because the setting says repeated this section gets repeated constantly and it doesn't look too weird but if I want to use a stretch you see how more fluid is because this section stretched connects perfectly to the tail and to the head of my stroke so the type of stroke that I'm using right now is not too weird compare to the other one look how more fluid this type of stretch is in conclusion always remember that because we are talking about vector type of brushes this thing is not created this stroke is not created on inside a specific layer or every stroke is inside the same layer every time we create a new stroke the system will create a new curve type of layer here in the layer palette so always remember that if we do something like we're sketching and if we do something like multiple strokes like this you're gonna have a layer curve per every stroke that you created so this could be really uh, convoluted in few seconds that could be that could turn into a really clutter type of layer well it's pretty much it for today's lesson Thanks guys for watching and I talk to you in the next one.